Hi, it's Rich Trani. Thanks for watching. You're watching TMC On the Road. We're in Dallas, Texas. It is September 2015. Uh, Jim Nivelle is with Katrine. He is with us today. And uh, Jim, how are you? Welcome to the show. Oh, I'm doing very well. Thank you very much for having us. So um, I thought we'd start at the top. Tell me a little bit about what you guys do and, and where you fit in the market. Well, so Katrine, we essentially provide mobile communication antennas, anywhere from the large macro cells that are sitting on the side of the road, small cells, and also DAS environments. detrine has been around for about 100 years, and we are considered the number one antenna vendor on the planet right now. Fantastic. So um, I'm going to go kind of, hopefully not too esoteric, but I know that there's been um, a push towards DAS from small cells just because there's a, a lot of complexity with uh, small cells and carriers have been complaining and they've kind of been pushing and moving in the other direction. I'm just curious on your perspective on that debate. So in the world of the wireless antenna sector, you really have to look at it threefold. One is the macro side, which is the very large ones, the ones that you'll see on cell towers, the traditional mental picture of it. Then you have the small cell approach, which is more of a, instead of a shotgun, more of a rifle approach. These are smaller items, might be on light poles, flag poles, uh, telephone poles, if you will. And then you have the DAS world, which is where we'll call it indoor environment or more maybe a little bit bigger in the campus world. All three of those fit together as a, as a solution. It all depends what best fits. When you're talking the argument between small cell and DAS, it really gets down to more of the economics of how you want to deploy. Small cells have the ability that has more coverage However, they can't finite and fit well maybe inside of a venue, an arena, these type of things. So you really have to make a decision, a technical decision, but also a return on investment decision of what's best to deploy. Okay, so what is it that makes uh, the antenna solutions that your company provide better than other companies out there? Yeah, that's a great question. So Katrine is known throughout the industry as being the number one quality vendor. You know our stuff works when we go out to deploy. As part of the wireless infrastructure, the antenna is very important. I'm sure everybody says the same thing about their section of the network. But with the antenna world, you're dealing with PIM issues. You're dealing with the aesthetics of how it looks. These things go up. They stay up. They work well. Everybody knows it. Fantastic. So um, in terms of trends that you're seeing in the market, we talked a little bit about small cell and DAS, but what other kinds of things are you seeing in the market that we should know about? So one of the main drivers going on the marketplace today is densification of the network. I mean, that's a fancy way of saying they need more bandwidth in the network, they, the carriers. So they're handling that a few different ways. One is adding more of what we call multi-band, using all this frequency that they've now purchased through auctions to use. So they're having to put in more complex antenna designs out there for this. That's one. Two, they're utilizing small cell approaches. So where they might not be able to put a very large macro cell, large tower inside maybe a city, they'll put in multiple small cells. That is a big driver in many of the CapEx spends at the moment. And then of course in the DAS sector, it's basically how you can get some more infrastructure put in place in the very hard spots, venues, indoors, these type of things. So the drive is to more densification of the network to essentially start preparing for 5G. Now, um, and that 2020 is, is when we can expect good rollouts of 5G? Is that what you're... We'll say that. I mean, there's nothing really definitive yet. There's still a lot of standards that have to be agreed upon. There's deployments that still have to be done to start prepping for that. But that seems to kind of be the good guess everybody's following. Do you have any uh, estimates on the of real speeds we'll see, or is it too early to even say? It's yeah, I think early. it's going to be a little too early to see. You know, It's probably going to be more of a growth ramp up. I mean, the amount of infrastructure the carriers are going to have to put in to meet this demand is really going to be the driving force sure. behind the acceptance of 5G. I think I saw Verizon say 2017 they're going to start uh, trialing. Mm -hmm. So... It's really not too far away. It's a couple of years away. I mean, really, we're almost in 2016 for all practical purposes. So. In terms of the standards and some of the technology going to be used, in terms of how everything's going to work together, you know, the introduction of IoT, the introduction of more complex needs of your normal just handsets, the, the driving demand of video, sure. all these type of things, yeah, you're going to start seeing introductions of technologies in 2017. Everybody's looking towards Korea right now as potentially being the first 5G deployment for the Olympics. 
So there's a lot of discussions going along. A lot of, we'll just say, arguments have to be settled. Okay, fantastic. It's going to be an exciting time, right? It's, it's uh, just more technology, makes things faster, allows better access to information, more productivity, right? It's a great time to be part of the wireless industry. It's very exciting, it's fast moving. Uh, people are really trying to come up with a better solution, not just from a technology viewpoint of how it affects the common person. Sure, so. and it'll also be backwards compatible, so we won't have to throw away our uh, <laughs> our Androids and, and iPhones. That, that, that's absolutely it. Uh, too much money is being spent out in the space, and so you have to absorb it all. That's great. So, um, closing comments. I just want to make sure that we got everything. What else should a potential buyer know about your company um, and why they should contact you to learn more about purchasing? Oh, that's fantastic. So, Katrine, we've been around for 100 years. We're known for uh, within the industry of quality, being there for you, being able to provide the equipment that you need. And we expect to be here a very long time going forward. So, so longevity, quality, and um, support and things like that, right? Just all the above. there to, to support your customers going forward. Absolutely. Great. Thanks for being here. That's great. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.